everybody, it's me, Susan Blackwell, and today I'm side by side one of my favorite Broadway Canucks from a Bronx Tale. Look, everybody, it's Nick Cordero. Hello. Tell the friends at home where we are and what we're doing today. We are at 80 St. Mark's Place, which is uh, an old theater space on St. Mark's in the East Village. And we are in the auditorium, which used to be the dance floor, I believe, of the, uh, of the speakeasy that used to be here during the Prohibition times. Who performed here? Frank Sinatra sang here in the 30s, um, Charlie Mingus, John Coltrane, Ornette Coleman used to live across the street, I was just told. This is crazy. Uh, Joan Crawford used to come here and dance, so it's it's a ton of history. This place is OG, and you're OG, so it's just, we just thought it was the perfect place to meet. Yeah, I, I like it. to hang in, in dark, mysterious places. 30 second life story. 30 seconds on the clock, tell me your life story. Don't leave out the awesome parts, starting now. Born in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Um, started performing when I was about 14. Mm. Went to Ryerson University at 18 in the acting program. Uh, left that program to seconds. be in a rock band. Uh, did that for four years. Did cruise ships for two years to save money to move to New York, which I did in 2007, and I've been here ever since. You've got five seconds left. Killing it. And you just got engaged to your lovely girlfriend, Amanda. And that's 30 seconds. Thank you. Oh, Thank I you. saved your ass. You saved me a lot of strife. Um, super bonus, name that autobiography. What's the title of that autobiography? Working on it. It's time for a game that we usually call What the What, Nick Cordero. But today, because there's so many swears in your show, I feel like we can actually get away with calling it What the f Nick Cordero. What, 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 what the f Nick Cordero. You're starring in a Broadway show called A Bronx Tale. What the f can you tell me about that, Nick Cordero? It's great. Um, I'm having a blast. Um, it's a Broadway musical. You're so good in it. Spoiler, you're so good in it. Thank you. It's a Broadway musical based on the movie from 1992, which was based on a one-man show uh, written by Chaz Palminteri. This was also written by Chaz Palminteri. It was directed uh, by Jerry Zaks and Robert De Niro, and the music was written by Alan Menken and Glenn Slater. It so it's a creative team it just for the ages. It doesn't get any fancier. My God. Yeah, and it's you know it's people. Are, people seem to enjoy it, so we're very uh, we're very happy over there. These are some things that people have said about you. People in your life. Mm. A brilliant actor, incredibly talented collaborative, a class act, just a large meat slab of a man who's always ready for a good time. What the <laughs> f true or false? Um, those are very complimentary things to Especially hear about Especially that yourself. meat slab part, right? Yeah, always, always ready for a good time. Yeah, I think that's pretty Do accurate. Do you think that sums you up? Yeah. If we don't survive the night, oh my what God. the f that's right, I got some deep cuts, Nick Cordero. You got some deep cuts. I did my research. Wow. If we don't survive the night, what the f What the f <laughs> is we that? We were talking about this. Uh, if we don't survive the night is like a, it's a chorus for a, a song that I want to write. I still do want to finish and but record But you've written a little bit of it. I have. It's like an homage to like an 80s sort of like, you know, yacht rock uh, anthem. And I think that I think people would like it. You No, no. You think it could be a huge hit. I do. I do think it could be a huge hit. So without further ado, and I'm told I should, you should really give this to us at 100% if we don't you survive the night. Gerald. You talked to Christmas Gerald. I don't you? know. <laughs> you want to hear it? Yes. If we don't survive the night. Baby, we're doing it right. We'll know we're alive if we don't survive the night. <laughs> Pyro. I, I you think laugh. You laugh. I'm not laughing. I think but it's going to be a minutes, huge, huge hit. You're going to be like in the bathroom, whatever, and you're going to be like, what is this? Oh my God, I can't just uh, get this song out it's, of my head. It's wonderful. If we don't survive the night, don't steal it, internet. I have yet to write it. Watch, Steal there's it. gonna be some kid out there who's gonna make, who's gonna record it before I do and buy a this house. This is what I want. This is my plea to the people that are watching at home. 
finish this song and tweet it at uh, me, Nick Cordero, at get at, me. get at me with your ideas. Get after for it. If we don't survive the night. But it's got, that was actually a lower register than what I, it's supposed to be. If we don't survive the night. Keep going. Baby, we No, I'm not warmed up. I can't. We'll know we're alive if we don't survive the night. <gasps> Pyro. If these walls could talk. Tell me one of the nuttiest things you've seen inside the walls of a theater. On stage, backstage, in a dressing room, in an audience. My parents used to take me to some pretty like avant-garde theater really? in, the, in the 80s. Yeah, when I was the only child, I have a brother and a sister, but there was a, a five-year period where um, I was the only child and they were like swinging and like, not swinging, they were, you know, committed to each other. This but interview's <laughs> got it all. But they were like, you know, going out a lot and they, you know, they used to have parties at the house. They were social. They were very social, yeah. very cool couple. The Corderos. And they, t uh, they used to take me to like all kinds of, they took me to like Senegalese dancing troops and That's stuff. That's awesome. Where my mom would be like, Nikki now, you know, these women are going to have their tops off, so. Um, but it's a cultural thing, so don't be as shocked. It's just, you know, this is what this is their custom. They're amazing they parents. Yeah, I think everything turned out pretty well. Got any special skills at the bottom of your resume? Celebrity impressions? Uh, I... I tend to play Chaz Palminteri musicals, so that'd probably be a close one. Can you give me a little Chaz? Um, don't act like you don't, because I know. Let me think of one. That you do. When my fiance's parents were coming to town, it was very important that I got uh, a table at Rayo's, the famous <sighs> Italian restaurant, because um, Amanda's father was, you know, always wanted to go to Rayo's, and so. Uh, and you can't get a reservation. And you can't get a reservation, so of course, you know, I had to email Chaz, and I was like, Chaz, can you help me get a table at this place? And he was, you know, he's like, it's going to be tough. But then he, he emailed me, and in big capital letters, it just said, Rayo's done. That's what he said. Done. I had to get, I had to make some calls, but I got it done, Nick. That's a good invitation. One word. And that is, Done. that's baller right there. Done. Shit. Oof. Hey, Nick Cordero. I'm tired of sitting on my ass. Let's check out the rest of this place. Let's do it. Here we are in the William Barnacle Tavern, which is a legit old speakeasy. It, this is, the history in this place is amazing. And you can totally come here. You can hang out, you can get a drink, you can talk about the crazy, what is it, the bomb trigger? Down in the basement, there's a bomb trigger that would light dynamite that used to be in the wall. So in case they were, they were coming for them, they were like. And there's tunnels, there's tunnels underground in the basement that the, the prohibition, or the, the bootleggers would like escape into uh, when the heat was on. So the history of New York is crazy. And this is definitely a part of it. It's yeah. fascinating. Come visit. Get out your phone, and I want you to show me the cutest picture of your cat or dog or pet You're hamster. Ready. You're not even ready for this. Look at this puppy. Come on. <gasps> Bye. He's a bad one. Which camera wants it? You do. Tell me the name of that puppy. His name's Freddy. I got a better picture. Hold on. Oh, no. I broke your phone. What's it's happening in that one. picture? There's a better one. <gasps> no! So all those photos before garbage. No! This was the first photo of our, of our no! new puppy that we saw. Look. Oh my god. So that's a day maker right there. Oh my god. Bad day? Who cares? Puppy the size of a soda can. Guess what time it is? What time is it? It's time for Susan's Fantasy Jukebox. I got your nose and you can have it back, but first you have to sing me a song. A song? Yeah. I've sung so much today. Sing some more, Nick Cordero. If you don't know me by now, oh, God damn yes. then you'll never, never, never know me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
and have your nose back. This has been another amazing episode of Side by Side by Susan Blackwell with Nick Cordero. You are a mother delight. Thank you. I had a lot of fun. Go and see a Bronx Tale. He is he's the complete package. You'll love it. Thanks, Nick. You're the best. You're the best. What was the greeting you gave to each other every day when you walked into the dressing room that you shared with Chris Fitzgerald at Waitress?